differentiation of tensors is in general a nuisance. Why? That is illustrated by this picture. As long as you have rectilinear coordinates, everything is fine. Then your basis vectors are constant. However, if you take for example polar coordinates, you see what is happening. The basis vectors r hat and theta hat vary from place to place. So if you differentiate, you have to take this into account. Doing all of this properly requires quite some effort, and I'm not going to do that. Why not? Well, for the applications I have in mind for now, rectilinear coordinate systems are sufficient. And if you have rectilinear coordinates, differentiation of tensors becomes much easier because the basis vectors are constant. So that's what we are going to do for now. We will see how tensors can be differentiated in the rectilinear case, and we will learn how we can generalize the divergence theorem in this case. The more general case can be done as well, of course, sometime in the future, but for now we have the rectilinear case in this video, so let us have a look. So, some notation, if you take, for example, the time derivative of a tensor, dt dt, uh, denote this by an over dot, so t dot, and you can just do so now by uh, differentiating its components, g i j, I j dot times e g, e i e j, because those basis vectors are constant. And if you start to differentiate with respect to the spatial coordinates, for example, d v i d x j, we can do, for example, dv1, dx2, or dv3, dx1, and so on. I uh, have a choice here. Uh, we denote it by vi, comma j. So the comma j means take the partial derivative of vi with respect to xj. And a consequence of this notation is that you can uh, uh, rewrite the divergence of a vector field. So the divergence of v, what is that? Well, you have the sum over the three components and then compute dv1 dx1 plus dv2 dx2 plus dx3 uh, v3 dx3, which we have over here. And of course we can abbreviate this using our index notation as vi, i. So the divergence of v can be abbreviated as vi, i. And that's an abbreviation we are going to use in our divergence theory, which you may know from calculus. So the, uh, if you compute uh, the uh, v in ds, surface integral of uh, vector field v, you can rewrite this as a volume integral of the volume v, uh, but then you have to compute the divergence of v. So that's divergence theory from calculus. Now, how do you do this? Well, you have to parameterize your surface s and find the outward normal everywhere, and then you compute uh, v in a product n uh, over the surface uh, s ds. Uh, which is equal to the same right hand side over here. And now we can use index notation v in a product normal. If you uh, write v, v1, v2, v3, and normal n1, n2, n3, you can rewrite this as vj, nj. And for the divergence we just had, uh, that we could rewrite it as vi, i, or use a different summation index vj, vj. So that's the divergence theorem as you know, it. nothing new over here. What is new is what, uh, when we start to do this with tensors. What we will need very often is to compute this surface integral over here. Some uh, tensor t, rank 2 tensor t, times normal. So this uh, t times n will give us some vector. Uh, we will have to rewrite that integral to an uh, 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 integral of the entire volume. Now, of course, we can uh, uh, use the uh, rewrite it as tij times nj. We have done nothing there. So we have the integral over the surface tij nj. And then notice similarity over here. So what can you do? Well, you can essentially keep the i fixed for a moment and then use the divergence theorem as normal. So what you do then, uh, this expression over here, keep i fixed and use a similar right hand side. So what you have to do is differentiate with respect to the uh, uh, j a variable and take the integral. So the divergence theorem for t and ds will become uh, triple k integral and then tij comma j over the volume v. Or you can rewrite this tentatively as is integral t and ds 
integral equals divergence of t dv. Now, if you want to know more about divergences of tensors and so on, you have to do a lot more work uh, for all of this differentiation. But for now, for a simple rectilinear case, uh, what we will need to use is only the divergence like this, and we can rewrite this integral, and that is what we will need primarily.